This year, it's all about the new. New decade, new faces, new expectations. And as the Cowboys are on their quest for six, they got the same dream. Where would this team go? There's no limits to what they can accomplish. So with a fresh perspective and a new direction, the 2020 Dallas Cowboys are determined to find greatness. And it all starts this offseason, right here on The Blitz. It's another edition of The Blitz, the Dallas Cowboys report. Kyle Yeomans alongside Nick Eatman as we're in our respective Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios as the social distancing continues throughout what has been a wild Cowboys and NFL offseason. And Nick, you've been around this team since 1999. Is this the craziest offseason you've ever been a part of? Well, Kyle, it has to be. I mean, uh, never before have we seen anything like this where we, we've been, you know, quarantined, like you said, for, for so long. And, and yeah, you know, I've, I've been here since uh, 1999, and, and I'm not sure uh, that, that we would have been capable to do some of the things that we've done, maybe even a show, you know, like this, uh, to be able to, to work, you know, and kind of pick up the pieces and, and you know, work from home and do all these uh, type of things. And so we have a lot of guys on on the back end that, that, that have done a lot of work pushing the buttons there but you know at least technology is advanced to the point where we can uh, do these things but as far as uh, your question yeah it's, it's absolutely uh, crazy and and I think the, the the thing that's the worst part is just not knowing when you know things are going to end and get back to normal and if it's ever going to be as normal as we know it. And you got to add in the wrench of having a new coaching staff. I mean, Mike McCarthy coming into the picture was already crazy enough after getting a new regime of coaches for the first time in a decade. And you add now what we're dealing with as a society in there, and it kind of adds to that pressure. But talking about some of the virtuality and some of the technology that's been used this offseason to pull off not only these shows, but really the entire process with the draft Overall, the draft itself is now going all virtual for the first time in history. And this is going to be a whole new kind of platform for the NFL to kind of show off how they're going to still continue being resilient in this fact. What are some of the things that you expect out of all 32 teams having to do the NFL draft virtually? Well, I, I just think communication is going to be uh, very important here, and, and especially when you, when you get into draft. I mean, when you get into the trade element of it, you know. I mean, we've seen war room footage of Jerry Jones with you know two phones and and talking to, to the Jets over here and the Bengals over here, and and you know while I still think some of that can happen, you got to remember he's had fifteen people in his ears talking, doing this and that. So now it's all going to be different. Um, you you know you, you'll hear people talking. I just think it's going to be harder to do uh, maybe those quick trades on the fly, um, you know th things like that. But uh, you know technology is is advanced to the point where I think it can be done. Uh, I wonder how many uh, you know risky moves we'll have. With, you know, with, with the guys will be sitting in there talking all the time, going, "Well, what if we did this? What if we did that?" You might see safer picks. Um, and you know we'll we'll just see how it goes. I mean, I, I think it'll be down three or four years down the road when we'll hear some really great stories about this trade almost happened, but it couldn't because we couldn't because you know somebody's Wi-Fi went down or, or whatever. So it, it, it's going to be chaotic, but a, it could be a, a fun chaotic. Also, not to mention free agency. Once the final pick is made, that's going to be chaos trying to get a hold of some of those undrafted free agents from different locations. Oh, now, yeah. moving forward, you've also got a, a, a something to celebrate off of a couple former Cowboys draft picks. Tyron Smith and Zach Martin named to the NFL's all-decade team this past week. The only team to have multiple offensive linemen selected. Pretty good, uh, or pretty big uh, honor for those two. Yeah, I mean, without a doubt, and I, and I don't think anybody was really surprised there. And uh, you know, you remember back when they drafted Tyron Smith, it was the first time in 30 years that they took an offensive lineman in the first round, and and then you know it's proved out to be an outstanding pick. And then they went back and did it a couple years later with Travis Frederick, and then again with Zach Martin. And I think you could have made a case for Travis Frederick being on that list too uh, at center. I, I thought he was a, a notable uh, snub there, but but you know those two guys, Zach Martin and Tyron. Aaron Smith, without a doubt, have been great this decade. Uh, 
you, you do wonder, though, a little bit, though, moving forward, you know, that they, they both had some injury issues. And so, you know, I, I still think they, they're going to play at, a, at an elite level. But, uh, you know, the, the injury bug is starting to catch up with both of those guys. So we'll see moving forward, you know, just if they can just stay on, on top of things uh, with, with their game. Tyron Smith turning 30 during this next football season. Zach Martin not getting any younger as well. We're rolling along here on this edition of The Blitz. When we come back, Mickey Spagnola joins the crew, and he'll see if that right defensive end spot is as sure as we think after some of those additions. The Dallas Cowboys Blitz is brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. For the ultimate Dallas Cowboys experience, tour the Star in Frisco where the Cowboys train and work. For more information, visit thestarinfrisco.com slash tours. This segment is brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay. Welcome back into this edition of The Blitz, the Dallas Cowboys report. And ever since the departure of Robert Quinn, there's been a big question mark at right defensive end. And even with the additions of Alden Smith and potentially Randy Gregory, Mickey Spagnola joins us to say not so fast. Things may not be as it seems. Thanks, guys. And welcome to my shelter-in-place makeshift office here at home. Thought I'd bring some perspective on this notion the Cowboys might have the surfaces, services of defensive ends Randy Gregory and Alden Smith for this 2020 season. Now the operative word there is might. Remember, both guys are still on the suspended reserve list. Uh, so the Cowboys need for uh, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell to reinstate them before they get him on the team. And we know how those things sometimes can go. Then let's remember the rust factor. Can't assume they'll be what they once were uh, because it's been a while since they've played any football. Gregory, for example, hasn't played a down of football since December 30th of 2018. Come September, if the season starts on time, that's 20 months ago. And since finishing his rookie year in 2015, he will have just played 16 games since that over the past 56 months. Again, if the season starts in September. That's very few games over a long period down time. So really, who knows uh, what you might get from him. And as for Alden Smith, let me tell you, he's got even more rust. The one-time first-team All-Pro player in 2012 has not played a down of football since November 15 of 2015. Come September of this year, that'll be 57 months ago. And get this, he's only really played 16 games since December 29 of 2013. That's like six and a half years with only playing 16 ball games. So there's a lot of rust on him. So to me, with those two guys, they're still, uh, because of their status right now and not having played a lot, uh, there's still a need for the Cowboys at right defensive end after losing last year's sack leader Robert Quinn in free agency. You can't really count on those two guys. And look, check out this. Uh, with the defensive ends that are still on the roster, not named Demarcus Lawrence, and that's the likes of Tyrone Crawford, Dorrance Armstrong, Joe Jackson, and Jalen Jelks. Those guys last year combined for all of two sacks. So the Cowboys got some work to do here at the defensive end position. Now, they still have free agency, and you know that when you get this deep in free agency, the talent gets a little thin. But who knows when you might be able to pull off a trade the way they did last year to acquire Robert Quinn. So, fellas, with all the needs the Cowboys have going into this draft, uh, when we're only you know less than two weeks away, uh, I think you better throw defensive end in there as one of their priorities, and you better circle it in red. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Mickey. And, of course, even with the additions that they've had, trying to address the scenario at right defensive end, Nick, that's not the first time this front office has tried to look at a problem that way. 
Yeah, I and mean, if you just go back to last year, uh, you know that they're just throwing stuff at a wall. You know, hoping that the things stick. Last year they made a trade for Robert Quinn. They also signed Michael Bennett in the middle of the season, and those moves turned out pretty well. And so I don't know if they're if they're actually counting on hey Gregory Alden Smith. You look at the tackles, Dontari Poe and and Gerald McCoy. You're hoping that some of these guys can get a little bit of, of a resurgence the way Quinn and Bennett did last year. And when we come back here on the Blitz, defensive tackles in the draft are plenty. David Hellman picks out a couple that could be a big fit here in Dallas. This segment was brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay. We're rolling along here on this edition of the Blitz. And, of course, with the NFL draft less than two weeks away, there's plenty of emphasis on trying to fill some of those needs, especially on the defensive side of the football. Our DallasCowboys.com draft expert David Hellman tells us about some of those defensive tackles who could be mid-round selections for the Cowboys. Thanks, y'all. All right. I want to talk about something that is near and dear to the thoughts of Cowboys draft fans over the last decade or so. What else could that be? But the defensive tackle position. Yes, I know the Cowboys signed Gerald McCoy and Dontari Poe in free agency. It does not seem to be the same level of need that it was a month ago, but you never stop looking for talent in the draft, right? And we can go back to the same Cowboys strategy that we've gotten familiar with over the last few years. Paper things over in free agency, address them well enough, and then you can still add talent in the draft. So are we talking about Javon Kenlaw at pick 17, potentially Derek Brown from Auburn? I doubt it. I think think, don't want to speak too soon, but I think defensive tackle is probably off the table with the Cowboys' first pick in the draft. But what about later on in the draft? What about a chance to add talent down the line, looking at day two, day three? I think there's some really intriguing talents there that they could take a look at. And lo and behold, it's backed up by what they're doing. Thanks to the Cowboys' front office, we're starting to get a look at players that they're interested in on these telecalls, on these video conferences. Raquan Davis from Alabama comes to mind, the massive 6'6 defensive lineman. James Lynch from down at Baylor is another guy the Cowboys have shown interest in. So they're doing their due diligence as well. This is still a position that's worth addressing. You didn't get a lot out of Tristan Hill in 2019. We'll see what he can do with a new coaching staff. But again, I'm trying to bolster the depth there. A guy that we've heard them link to several times, speaking of Texas products, Justin Matabuike from down at Texas A&M. Very versatile, very powerful defensive lineman for the Aggies these past couple of years. A guy that I really like, I think you could get him at a discount maybe later on in the draft, third round, fourth round, Devon Hamilton out of Ohio State. So much talent coming out of Columbus that guys tend to get lost in the shuffle. Don't think he got a whole lot of shine during his college career, but he's impressive athletically. I think he's got the traits to develop into something. Throw one more name out there for you. This is probably a higher pick. You might have to take him with your number 51 overall, your second round pick. But Jordan Elliott out of Missouri, I love his versatility. I think he could play one technique or three technique in a 4-3. I think he could even do some 3-4 work, depending on what you want to do with him. Know the Cowboys. People have talked about them potentially making that switch. I don't know if I buy that. But I'm all about getting versatile guys who can do a little bit of everything. That's what Don Tari Poe is. He's played zero technique in a 3-4. He's also played one technique in a 4-3. I like the idea of getting guys that can do a little bit of everything. So that is a handful of names. I think you could get day two, maybe even a couple of them on day three, to bolster that defensive tackle position. Again, I think I'd be pretty surprised to see him pick a defensive tackle at pick number 17. Doesn't mean you can't address it later on. I think there's a lot of names you could do that with. That's a few of them. Back to y'all. Thanks so much. If the Cowboys were to take a defensive tackle in this year's draft, it'd be the second straight they've done so because they did take Tristan Hill in round number two last year. And Nick, that didn't necessarily work out, at least in year one. Yeah, I mean, you know, he had some some issues just getting on the field. I mean, he they, they the reason why they had to go get Michael Bennett was that they needed some some depth there, and and you know, typically when you you take a guy in the second round, he's ready to play, and he he really wasn't last year, and uh, you know, maybe a new coaches, new scheme, but you know, it's unfortunate for him. Most guys take that big leap between year one and year two 
big offseason program, maybe his maturity on and off the field, and and you know he's not getting that structure with the team, and a lot of those, uh, none of those guys are uh, early in their career like that. So uh, you, you hope he can take that that next leap, and maybe a new coaching staff will, will a new scheme will help him. But they they need to get something out of Tristan Hill for sure uh, going into his second year. If Hill is able to make an extra step, it'd be a huge addition to that defensive line. We talked about some of those mid-round prospects in the upcoming NFL draft. When we come back, we're going to look at a first-round edge rusher that could be a perfect fit with the Cowboys. Great to be here with you. And this is your interview to to be a Dallas Cowboy, what, what, what do you want us to walk away from this interview with as the most important thing you want us to know about you? You talk to us about your love of the game. Yeah, I think that's that's one of my, my best attributes, my best assets, and it's crazy because um, you just can't, it, it's not even taught, and it's it's I come from the heart, and that shows my love, love for the game in, in itself. If someone were to give you a compliment as a football player, not as a person, but just as a football player, what would that compliment say? Your motor is unlike any other. Good answer. One of the many virtual interviews that the Dallas Cowboys coaching staff and front office have had with these NFL draft prospects, Zach Bond out of Wisconsin, an edge rusher that could fit in a 4-3 or a 3-4, which may make him a perfect fit in a high motor that could come play in Dallas. Badgers bring the pressure. Herbert back, pedaling, flushed. Pump fake, a long way to go, and will not make the first down. Stop at the 32 by Zach Bond. Zach Bond is the next up on a long list of talented linebackers from Wisconsin to enter the NFL. Just being from Wisconsin and the development program that I've had throughout my journey has really helped uh, the maturity. As I matured on the field, I matured off the field as well. Credit to Wisconsin for teaching me the values and um, to work hard, to be driven. Um, to be dependable. That dependability has skyrocketed Bond up draft boards, and if he were to be selected in the first round, it would be the first day one Badger pick since T.J. Watt in 2017. Much like Watt, Bond relies on life lessons from his family off the field to translate to his play on it. Yeah, I mean, I have five other brothers and sisters. Was four, we recently added a new one through the adoption system, but um, just having that, that many brothers and sisters with a single mom, um, you really have to rely and, and, and trust and work together. So I feel like those values um, will continue with me forever. As a ball player, the Brown Deer Wisconsin native can do it all. A high school quarterback who made the switch just prior to arriving in Madison and has picked up the position remarkably well. One of the teams, uh, uh, identified me as like the toy. I kind of all can do it all, linebacker, um, giving me the opportunity to rush the edge, play off the ball, um, drop into coverage, use use all my, my skill set to the fullest. Though he may be a late riser in the draft process, it's no surprise to Bond, who has worked toward that draft day moment his entire life. I can believe I'm here with my, my attitude and my, my um, my driven, my driven purpose, and I feel like everything in my life has kind of been a, a risk. I was taking a risk transferring to Brown Deer, taking a risk playing quarterback, taking a risk um, playing outside linebacker, which I'd never even played defense in my life. But um, I knew with my hard work and my, my tenacity and willingness to get after it and, and be the best at whatever I'm doing, it's a true competitive edge that's that's helped me throughout. And if you want to learn more about Zach Bond and the rest of this NFL draft coming up in a couple of weeks, we'll tell you exactly how you can do that when we return for our final segment here on The Blitz. The Dallas Cowboys Blitz was brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. For the ultimate Dallas Cowboys experience, tour the Star in Frisco where the Cowboys train and work. For more information, visit thestarinfrisco.com slash tours. One final segment here on the Blitz, the Dallas Cowboys report. And mentioned this a couple moments ago. If you are looking to get involved with the NFL draft and stay up to date, there's one way to do that, and it's the 2020 
Dallas Cowboys star magazine. And, Nick, that's the best way to do it the Cowboys way. Yeah, without a doubt. It's been really good to, to you know, get you involved this year on, on the draft uh, magazine. I think this year we, we changed it up a little bit, a little bit more fun facts and tidbits in there. A lot of history there, a lot of players we, we talked about. You know, on the cover there, you see uh, you see some some players that could be a fit at 17. You also see a couple of 17s, uh, Mel Renfro, Emmett Smith. So they've struck gold in the past at 17. He's Nick Eatman. I'm Kyle Yeomans. You can get your digital copy for $4.95. Thanks for joining us on The Blitz.